DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy to manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. here this is music talk with mj and john you can bring your music questions to us we will completely ignore them and we're going to talk about pretty much what we want you make this show sound so low-key we have like a, a microphone. late night late night with john and mj hello thank you for calling caller number one what's your question what music turns you on oh wait that's the other show the other show Hey, thank oh, you for, wow. jo thank you for joining show. us on Facebook or YouTube out there in the interweb land. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about music and filing and putting them into categories and putting them into the boxes and putting them into crates and, and storing them. Oh, it's going to be fabulous. I'm just fired up. Interesting might be a word because there's going to be an audience tonight. Like I, I told John at the top of the hour that I, I we probably should say this, you know, like when, remember when... Uh, those of you who are, who are old enough to remember uh, when they did the world, the world, the world's broadcast, yes. and every so often they had to announce that this is just a fake drama, so people didn't get caught up. <laughs> I, I want, I want something to scroll across the bottom of the screen every little bit that says there is no wrong way. Oh, we, I think I can do this one. I think I can do this. Yeah, one. There is no wrong way. I want to preface that tonight so that everyone knows there is no wrong way. What I'm hoping to do by the end of tonight is maybe give you some new ideas of ways to do it. Um, to to it could be something an idea from the simplest of folder names to tags. We're gonna we're gonna go the gambit. I'm gonna take a trip back in time, and we're gonna start looking at music organization from the '70s. So our older guys will uh, will will feel the pain, and the younger guys will understand when we say certain words where they came from. Um, and we're gonna just kind of go the whole trip, and in amongst all of this. In amongst all of there is no wrong way, I'm going to be showing you my way. And at the end of the night, at the end of all this, we'll be able to ask questions. But I want you to put my system, my system of organization to test. And tonight we're running straight off my, my uh, DJ computer. So we're going to run it in test of being able to be efficient with it. And that's kind of why I'm guessing why people want to organize their, their music better is to be efficient finding it, right? Mm-hmm. That be the guest? I I would think so because then it's a lot easier to browse. I think I think a lot of people miss the days of the CDs where you had the the books of, of CDs and you could actually paw through and you could actually tactily choose your next track. I'm going to be showing CDs and I'm going to be showing all kinds of cool stuff tonight. So let's take let's again last. I'm going to say this for a couple of minutes. I am going to be covering both virtual and Serato. So those of you who are wondering, you'll get to see both tonight because they both have some interesting ways of doing this. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to see how mine is progressing from the, the, the late 80s, early 90s into now because I'm actually having to stuff that I organized before is not right. And I heard someone in the chat earlier said theirs is a mess. Um, that's okay because we might be able to help help you with less effort than you could ever imagine. That's the goal for tonight. Okay, so again, there is no wrong way. And I come up with an analogy. My best way to, to anal give this analogy of why I say there is no wrong way. Um, if we have tools, some people prefer to keep their tools in a toolbox. Mm -hmm. Some people prefer to have them on the wall on little pegboard hanging. Some people prefer to have them in a tool belt around their, their waist. So there is no wrong way. You do it how you want, but these are some ideas, okay? 
All right. So first thing I want to talk about is go back to the 70s to records. Um, for those of you who actually remember records when they were records, um, there were <laughs> you had to organize them. And it wasn't the easiest thing because it became a lot more of your mind knowing this album had this record on this cut and it had. And I think that's why I think I do so well when we talk about music stuff, because in my mind, I'm putting to me. I just don't know the name of the song. It's the fact that that song has this intro and this outro and goes this long. Mm -hmm. Or on this one, I have this version of this, and it's shorter or longer. So back then, you had to actually kind of know or make a lot of notes, which we did. And one of the things that they did back then was called white labels. And white labels, uh, some people call white labels being um, kind of unreleased promo tracks. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, they were also a way of marking it an album so that no one knew what you were spinning. Okay. So I'm going to share over here and okay. Now we need to share. So, oops, is that right? Yeah. Not yet. I got to go back to the share. I'm, I'm working with actually, I'm actually working with three screens tonight, everybody. So please be patient. So this was a white label. You actually put a literal white label on the record and then drew something on it so that you knew what it was and nobody else did. And that was the whole idea. You're going through there. It could be a picture. It could be a word. Um, it could. I know people that stamped theirs so they knew theirs. Mm -hmm. So you would get things like that. <laughs> um, marking. And these were all, again, stuff so that you knew what it was. Nobody else did. And that record would have certain markings on there and you'd know what they are stuff like that, mm. which I actually then moved that into the CD world, which I'll show you later. And that was white labeling. Okay. Right. So that was a way of organizing back then. Okay. Um, that is actually still used today in a different way, but we're going to go on to um, CDs because John, when we were chatting earlier, you made us think about like all the pretty colors of your album art. Yes. Of way of organizing. But with the, that, as you saw with the records, was kind of a way of doing that. Yeah, my. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because I know people, I, I still try to keep my album art up to date, even though I don't use it as much, it's still something there visual. But when it went to the CD world, okay, I took the, the um, white label thing to another level. Okay. And this was my, just a picture on our plain white picture okay and that's kind of the way i organize some stuff and then i would have stuff that would have that and it would just say cd number six or club mainstream club cd number six i knew what was on there sure and it was a way of hiding things um somewhere that one was called cut and paste okay i knew what that was uh -huh. i knew that the were songs that i would use to cut in and out and use as transitions and it just goes on and on and on um some would get a general picture of just two people. So it became a way of organizing stuff by visual. Sure. And that's perfectly okay if that's what you need to do. And like I said, again, there is no wrong way of doing this. Mm. Okay. So now we go past CDs to MP3s. That gives it a little different way of looking at things, okay? Because you don't have a visual thing to look at or touch yes. anymore. So you now have to start figuring out how to organize that thing that you knew before visually. Because everything we did was visually. You visually saw the record. You visually saw the CD. Now you don't have that. So you have to start organizing. And it kind of depends on what you are organizing to do things. And I want to share um, a screen here and show some of where mine has gone from the past to the present. Um, get this screen here. So a lot of my early day stuff, uh, this mouse thing, there we go. And you can see down here, some of it was just done by BPM because I was spinning uh, just EDM. So I, I knew in those genres basically where the BPM was. Okay. Sure. So some of the organization was just done in nothing but 
BPM. Um, not everybody spins the same things and we all don't start out the same spot. So our end result might be different. So once you took it past the pictures to the, the MP3s, this is a little trip back. Now, well, John, you are going to flip out when I show this. Um, let me find it here. There we go. Oops, open up. Because some of you are going to love this. I, I'm so happy that I get to share this. Because beyond the pictures, that was my way. Because like I said, I toured and I only needed so much music. So someone doing a wedding or parties or a club, you need a whole lot of music. So how do you organize that? Well, promo only decided to put out their disc system and that's 40 discs of songs from all different eras and how did we track that john do you remember yeah we had we had the the lists and such there and there was these lists and i'm going to go into them a little bit deeper mm -hmm. uh you could search by artist and these were just tracking title different things like that and as you see off to the right here yeah. if i were to search for the the artist that's done alphabetically, or then I went to a totally different sheet and searched by title. That was done alphabetically. And then BPM, and then you could search within each one of those, the BPM, the artist, and it would tell you on the right side there, the disc it was on and the track on the disc. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing a BPM, you would grab the BPM and say, I'm going to do the 129, 130 stuff, and this would help. So this was a way of organizing, Okay. So we went past all of that. Um, I, I want to make a note and go back just a second about hiding the names of songs because people still do that. And it's to the point where I know DJs who will label their songs wrong so people can't look over their shoulder and get the song names or something. And in the new Den and Prime system, they actually have a secret mode that you press and it will not show the song name on the screen. That's actually in, something built into today's technology. In this day and age of Shazam and Soundhound and things, where you can, they're still doing? Or? Because it may be someone's personal mix. Oh. Or you may get it and it may, because like Shazam and, and, and Soundhound won't always find it. Hmm. Trust me, I changed that. What, what that was called back in the days, when you looked over the DJ's shoulder, it was called um, uh, train spotting. You look through DJ Soldier trying to see the thing train spawning. Well, when it switched over to the Sound Hound and Shazam, you know, we're surfing the internet. So I called it train surfing. And it was basically the same thing. You stand in the club and you hit that button and go, okay, that's that song. That's mm -hmm. that song. And by the end of the night, you have 20 songs that you didn't have before just because you, you did there. that. Yeah. All right. So, like I said, we all didn't start out the same way. Uh, so we don't, don't all end up the same way. We don't all spin the same genre of music <clears throat> we don't all spin the same songs all the time um so putting all of that information together some of you like you said earlier may need to start from scratch but you may not to may not need to also okay so we're going to take it from where you're at right now with what you have okay so there are programs that you can use to organize your music but I'm, I'm going to go back to the beginning. Again, there is no wrong way. When most people ask you and I, John, how do you organize your music? I think, I think what they're actually asking, to put it in better definition, is I have a series of folders. How should I label them and what should I put in them? I think that's what they mean by that. What do you think, John? Very, very possible. I, I, I don't know if it's that or if they're just – it was a level of kind of – desperation and nostalgia of wanting to be able to go and look through your best of club CD. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that unless you make a playlist or make a folder or something. So now it's like, okay, what was that fourth track on that? I don't remember, but boy, I remember that used to go really well, but I don't remember what the song. Yeah, exactly. Because back in when you thought about it, you said, I know that song. I know it's on this disc. Yes. Or I know it's on this record. And then a couple seconds later, you're like, click, click, click. There it is. Yeah. It was that sort of thing. So you kind of have to restart. Um, you can use iTunes to kind of clean that up a little bit, just looking at stuff. And this is, again, beyond moving stuff in and out of folders. Um, you, don't, you don't have to, but you can. We're going we're gonna to look mm -hmm. at moving stuff in and out of folders in just a couple of minutes by genre. 
um, some tried and true things. Like, again, there is no wrong way, but we're going to look at some of the more traditional things. Um, Record Box, the, the software, is now a DJ software, but it used to be a music management software. Denon's Prime Engine software is a music management software, same sort of thing to organize and stuff. There are softwares out there like Media Monkey that can help you organize, that can actually help you with um, uh, uh, album art, different things like that. Uh, one of my favorites is MP3 Tag because MP3 Tag, you can put formulas in there. So let's say you have a bunch of songs in a folder that came from some sort of CD where it says 01 and then the song name and then 02 and then the song name and 03. So it's different track numbers. With MP3 tag, you can put a formula in there so it will grab the entire list that has that and then remove the first three digits. So it's going to be 01 space and then your your track name. And it will remove all of them. Hmm. And with that software, you can also put a filter in there that will capitalize the first letter of each word. So all your tracks aren't some are uppercase, some are lowercase. Case, yeah. It will do all of them batch in a batch and, and create them so they all look the same. And then you can sort it and say, okay, which ones have a space? Because, you know, we've all seen where it's a name or the track. There's a space for some reason, and then the track starts. You can clean all of those up with that, too. MP3 tags the name of it. Um, HeliumMusicManager.com is another. It's a site that you can use. And one, of, I think probably one of the most robust ones to take it from just bottom end scratch. Again, these are all like bottom end scratch, start from the bottom up things, is uh, a tune-up. Okay, it's it's a it's a paid service and it will actually go through and look for them and fix them some of them for you to a certain level. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um my thing is is that I don't like to use any of them except for the, the MP3 tag because it does the group. Like I said, it's good for like like I said, for capitalizing everything. It'll do very nice. Because I'm gonna use the software that I'm DJing with to do all of that. Virtual does all of that. So I, I, I actually had somebody ask me a while back about, you know, what do you use to manage your software? And it, it kind of stumped me because I'm like, why would you need to do that? Just use your DJ software, mm -hmm. use your Serato, use whatever. Um, so we're going to be looking at using that too. So, but again, there is no wrong way. It's up to you. Okay. I use, we're going to go back to the beginning again. I have stuff in two, two or three different sorting types and I use virtual eight to do my music management on top of my DJing. Okay. The way I DJ, the way I, I mark them is one of the first things I mark is genre. Okay. And one of the things I want to bring up here is this, this is where I think people wanted the folders. Okay. Sure. And you would people, I think what they're asking is how do I label the folders that they're in? And there are some traditional ways that you can do it. This one is, believe it or not, our friends at Promo Only have their formats. And a lot of DJs who've been DJing a long time use these title names for their folders and then put stuff in there by those folder names. Yes. Okay. And it's and they kind of give a best ex explanation of what they are. And again, we're taking from the very beginning. Uh, you can start this way if this is your way. Again, there is no wrong way. Um, if you want to go a little bit further than that, you can go to type in music genres in Google and it gives you names and you can go by that if you want. It is showing the next screen, right? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I want to make sure because sometimes when I share, it doesn't go. So you can do that and pick your folder names by something like this. Pretty simple. Or you can go even further if you want and go into Wikipedia and they have all the different things from different countries and then all the different possibilities under that. So there's different types of country music, and you can do subfolders, easy listening, electronic, hip-hop. So there's different subfolders of these main folders. So you can get that far if you want in making those folders or, what I'm about to suggest, tagging them. A lot of people don't like to tag. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why. Uh, I've had I've had 10 conversations recently that people are like, well, I don't bother doing that. This is where at the end of tonight, I'm going to let you challenge because I use the tagging method, okay? And I'm going to let you challenge to break my system, okay? So tags, I'm going to show you on virtual. We're going to bring virtual up. And we're going to show how it tags so that you're able to do stuff. And I go back to here and share. Okay, we got virtual up, right? 
Yes. All right, so we're looking at my actual thing here, and there's a lot of folders here, and we're going to come back to some of these more. So when I'm DJing, I run off of, because I tag, one folder the whole night, okay, which is my new new and pop. And what this is is songs that are either new that I want to remind myself to play a lot or stuff I play often. Sure. Okay. Virtual lets you sort it by play count. So a lot of times it's that. And I'll get into why this is this is going to be important here in a bit. Um, but if I wanted to re-tag this one, I right click on it and then tag editor. And this is where you can get really funky with stuff is to where you can do the name, the, the actual remix that it is. This is one of my remixes, the year that it was put out, and then your genre. And you can literally name that whatever you want. You can keep with the traditional stuff or you can name it what you want. This also gets you the BPM, the key, um, puts your album art, because if this is not the right album art, um, I click on there and virtual goes and finds album art and I can change it and put the album art, whatever I want it to be. Um, I can also color the song so that if I want that song, I think it is blue right now. No. So we're going to make it blue. See it right here. We're going to make it blue because that's one of my tracks. So blue. And then when I write to the tag, it's blue. Sure. Okay. The reason the keys in here and everything, the reason I say this is because by tagging this way, I can drag, I can literally hand you my hard drive with the songs in it. You scan it on your computer with virtual, if you're using virtual, whatever, these are always going to be there. So, so it's always going to have this information. So if this laptop craps out and I get a new laptop, I drag these songs over. All of go. my genres, all of my everything is already done for life. Sure. The album art, the colorization. If I, you know, like I said, there is no wrong way. If you like to do, uh, color, like I like to do colorization for things, and I'm still trying to build what I want my colorizations to be. Um, but you can do everything, and it's always with that. So you're changing these up however you want them. Um, the other thing you can do, I'm going to grab another song. Um, go back to tag editor and you can take over comments. And I don't know if I have any comments. Let me see what I have commented here. Cause with virtual, again, I can pick what I want the searches to be here. So I'm going to pull up comments and see what's under comments for some of these. All right. So I have um, tag editor. So in the comments, I have put, something it's not in there so where's the comments at oh. you 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 just said you're in a remix uh... yep i am there we go all right so there's a comment there we go this is one of my remixes so i put my web address in the comments in case you forget it well in case somebody else has it oh, if somebody okay. else takes it then they know that came from him and they could find it if they want to come back uh -huh. but you can go as far as this which i've seen guys do where they take over that and can do even anything like a venue so that if you DJ once a month at this college bar and you have this grouping of songs that you like to play there, um, you can even tag it with that. Okay. Here's a good example. Um, I'm going to type in here, slow dance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now if you look at these, all the tags are marked as soon as the tag pops up. It's either slow dance there. I'm going to go to the next one. And you can just jump in and out of them. See right there, slow song. So these are, if I ever wanted to come up with a song that I, I, I said, well, I need to, you know, DJ a, a, a slow dance. Um, it's in there. It's also in the genre. So something as simple as that, where it, I don't have to put it in a folder. I just search for it. Okay. So all your tagging can be done this way. You can do clean and dirty, genre names, however you want to do this. Instrumental, acapella, um, whatever suits your boat, you can tag. Um, so that that's that part of that. Is the tagging thing kind of understood? Yeah, I, mean, I think we see how you see how to do that. Because I'm, you're going to see me get really anal with tagging later on, mm -hmm. and I'll show you why. Okay. But you can take this further. And this came from a question your son brought up the other day about he was organizing some stuff with virtual and putting it in folders, okay? So you can make individual folders over here. So um, if we look at my music, all right, so this is the actual folder system 
that the songs are put in. And again, it's been updated. So, you know, like if you open up Windows Explorer, you know yeah. what I'm talking about? You will see these folders there. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. you also can have favorite folders to pop out. So let's say in, in this, I want it to be, I wanted my 2000s to be a favorite folder. I would uh, add that as a favorite folder right there. And then it would be just like this DJ music as a favorite folder. Mm-hmm. Karaoke is a favorite folder. This one, believe it or not, is a playlist that I've created into a favorite folder. So I can take a playlist, go up to my lists up here, and I'm going to grab right here band because I know what band was, and I want to make band one of my favorite folders. So I click there and go boop, and band is right there now as my favorite. Sure. So it's quick access. <clears throat> and removing it um, is quick as that. The songs aren't gone. You're just removing it off of there. Mm-hmm. So playlists can be made that way and a virtual folder. So we're going to go and we're going to create a virtual folder right here. Um, and there, there's two different kinds of folders, a filtered folder and, and a, a favorite folder. So we're going to create a virtual folder and we're going to call this uh, test one. Okay. And it creates a folder in, where did it go? I, must, I think I had something clicked on there. Because if you, if you have something highlighted, it will, it will nest that in there. Sure. So now I can find out where that was nested at. <laughs> Crap, where was that nested at? Um, uh, where was that at? I don't know where that was nested at. But anyways, it will put it there. Okay. I, I, I'm going to try to click off of that and see why that... Do we remember what was there? There it is. Yeah. It, it did put it under karaoke. All right. So you can actually drag it and move it. So I don't want it in karaoke. I want it out there in the open. Sure. So it's it wasn't out there in the open unless I put it in here now. I keep moving them wrong. I'm so freaking... There it is. Like, I'm so freaking click happy. All right. So we're going to drag this way up there. And we're going to put that there and lots of stuff there. And John is going to take questions. So if I want to put stuff in there, I can just type something in, type in uh, Michael Jackson. And I can put that in that folder, rock with you. And it goes into that folder. Yep. Okay. So it's not moving the song. It's creating database with that in there. So that you can then, if you switch computers and you carbon copy your database from one computer to the other, you're going to have all these Same. Test things in there. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that can be anything you want. Again, that's not moving. That's again, let's go back to the person who at the beginning said that they had hor- a horrible system and everything was everywhere. Yeah. You don't have to touch that. You can start by doing this to organize what you already have. So let's say, because I know my tags are good, I want to put in there all of Michael Jackson stuff. Sure. I can put all of that in there and then have a whole folder of Michael Jackson stuff, which I know I actually have more than that. Now, um, now why, why is yours? I don't, I see that little uh, movie reel. That's different than what mine shows. Is that the, the uh, theme? Those are the, videos. Yeah, but, but is that the skin that's making it? The skin that's making it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so like if, if I had that, that was there. So we're going to go up here to the straight DJ music, and we're going to do a recurse, which brings everything up top to bottom, and you'll see videos and videos. Cause I play a lot of videos, so I think I have to go all the way down here to get out of the videos. Mm-hmm. Somewhere in there. See, I play a lot of videos, John. Mm-hmm. And there we go. I think that's going to bring it up. There we go. So now these are the audio tricks. That's why the other Michael Jackson stuff didn't go up. You can tick with virtual. The cool thing is if you only want to see videos, you do that and you only see videos. If you only want to see MP3s, you do that. So it's kind of neat that you can see both there. Um, So I know the genres and stuff, by the way, that have them marked so that I'm able to put them in the folders. So let's let's take this further, okay? I'm going to create a filter folder now, okay? Okay. So I'm going to, I think, again, so I don't want to, I'm going to leave it there because I want to nest it. So I'm going to do a filter folder. We're going to call this folder uh, test two. Wow. Okay. 
The right. test tube is now a folder. I add things to it that I want it to be so that from now on, let's say I wanted this to be BPM because, again, a lot of guys DJ by BPM. Uh, I do BPM and then I do um, uh, – do I want to do equal to – I want to do greater than. Let's say it's greater than 100 and then BPM – less than 105 and I think there needs to be a space right there wait is that right oh and I need the word and there okay so now as you see every song in my entire library that is between 100 and 105 is now in that smart folder hmm. and from now on to the end of history if I add a song that falls in that BPM range, guess where it goes also? Into here. So you can put it in a folder, whatever folder, physical folder you want, it then gets added into this to become that folder for you. So you can have that as being, you know, rename it um, uh, 100 to 105. And from now on, I know that's always going to be. Every song I add to my computer from here on out Um is going to be put in there. It's going to be slid into there. You can do things like length, genre, composer. Um, you can do time limits on these so that if you only want a song to be, like let's say you want the folder to be called um, new, and that new represents only the songs that came out in the last month, mm -hmm. you can tag that so that once that month's, that, that 30 days is up, it pops it out of that folder. And anything new you add, it pops it into that folder. So do you understand how the filters work? Yep, yep, yep. Um, and you're in a section here. Jonathan uh, asked about uh, when you – that if, say, you have that 30-day thing and some songs bump out of that, um, how, do you, how do you keep them from getting back in there? Or will the filters do that? If you do the filter 30 days, it's going to look at the date on the computer and go back 30 days. So it's simply going to be whatever date your computer is, it's going to just – you know, if this is, you know, the 30th of the month, anything that came in 30 days prior to this, it goes out. And anything that's been added in the last 30 days comes in. Or you can do it by year. You can do it by uh, most played. Okay. Um, how first seen, last played. Um, ratings. You can do a folder on five-star ratings. And, and within the tag, um, you can give that a five star. So only five star songs go in there, which kind of fits into what your son was asking about putting the hits in there um, that you can star them and then do folders that filter the stars. Sure. So if you label these songs as all these songs as five star, five star, five star, then do a filter folder and it's there. And again, all of this is without touching your previously messed up, <laughs> file system again there's no wrong way so these are just ways the easier to find it okay um, next and then i want to continue here so let's say i do this i have a song that i put in there and i find out that the the track i have it's in this this folder but it's it's got it's explicit and i don't want that so i delete it off my hard drive how it do comes I, out of the playlist it does it come out of the playlist because it's, i sometimes when i do a search it'll have, have sorry i'm not out of the playlist it'll come out of the the, the filter folder. Okay. Okay, because there's a difference. We're going to talk about playlist here in a couple minutes, okay, too. Okay, so, so that's, are different we want to touch on that if we can. But the thing is, is I, I somebody asked this earlier in the chat, is there's a thing called recurse, and what it does is it looks at everything within there and kind of scans it. So if I delete a song out, I go here, right-click, and recurse, and it scans everything under that, because I know that is my main folder. The DJ music is my main folder. Right. Everything else is under that. So if you deleted it, right-click, recurse, it will then no longer show up. Because hmm. I, I literally, every time I turn my computer on, I recurse just in case I deleted stuff or move. So if I put something in a folder that's 80s, and then all of a sudden I realize, holy crap, that actually came out in 1990, I'm, I, I can physically move that track if I had it in a physical 80s folder, you know, like I said, my, my hierarchy, move it to 90s, recurse, it's now going to see it in the 90s. 
you know, I can change, I can change the date on it. So if you had an eighties filter folder and you had it 1989 and you go, oh, that's wrong. It was 1990. You change the actual date on the tag of the folder. If I go in here and, and, and change the actual date right. of that right. being 89 to 90, um, what that's going to do is then move it out of your filtered eighties folder and into your filters nineties folder. And again, you're not moving physical files. You're only moving it within, it creates its own database within the virtual DJ database. Okay. Is that, is that kind of makes sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to jump out of this for a second because I do want to share. I'm going to have to move a couple things here. I want to share that it's the same with Serato. Are we going to look at the new skin? The new Serato? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, do we know about that yet? Well, yes, they showed know. it now. Oh, it's old news. Now, let's do something right. really impressive. Let's go to Megasig. No. All right, so Serato does the same thing. So this is Serato. And you can do and create a folder over there. Crush my uh, dreams. Regular folder or a smart folder. And I'm going to add a smart folder. And then we add rules to the smart folder. So you can do when it was added, year, same sort of thing. File name, artist, album, BPM. White label. Uh, That's greater, interesting. Greater than or equal to. So we're going to do uh, greater than or equal to 100. And we add a second one, add a rule that we go in and go. I think theirs is a little simpler. Greater to or equal than, um, greater to or less than 105. Mm-hmm. Um, so we do 105. So now this one now becomes, that's what this folder, that smart folder is. Sure. Okay. It only filters that way. And it's basically, like I said, it's basically the same thing. I think theirs is a little more intuitive in a way. Um, but the, again, why I like virtual, because it lets you, um, it gives you a thousand more options. And if you don't want a thousand more, I always tell people, if you don't like to customize, then virtual might not be for you because it really can become overwhelming to some people, all the different things that you can do. Right. Okay. So that's how that works. Um, and for those of you who are wondering, yes, this is Serato. And that's all I'm going to say. It's your chance to see Serato. If you've never seen Serato, wink, wink. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Um, it, there's also rules in, in the Serato one that I think are neat that they put in there. Contains is, doesn't contain. Mm-hmm. So you can say contains a, a, a filter of clean or dirty. Okay. And you can do that. Now we're going to go out of here. And we're going to look, go back to virtual, and we're going to go look at playlists and the difference between them and why this is important. I want to make sure we have time here. We're good for time, right? Yeah, we've, we've got about 11. Yeah, we're almost done. We're real close. And then we'll ask the questions, and I'll let you test my system. Um, because you then have those folders, which I'm going to start using. I've always used playlists, but I want to start using the filtered folders and different things. Not necessarily the filtered folders, but more of the folders. Sure. Uh, a playlist is what I've always done mine. And here's, here's one of the big advantages with a playlist. Um, there's advantages and disadvantages. So if I wanted to put that, which a lot of you guys use autoplay, so I can do my Cinco de Mayo, right click, load an auto mix, and it's over there. Okay. So <laughs> this <drunk> playlist, <laughs> what's that? Drinking yeah, drunk songs. There's a stuff for uh, a St. Patrick's Day songs. Okay. <laughs> um, so that'd be like Margaritaville, blame it on the, you know, tipsy gin and juice. You know, Cheryl Crow talks about drinking in the middle of the afternoon, raise your glass. That's that, that was those. <laughs> but you see how they're yellow? Mm-hmm. That means that whatever folder I had them in, when I created this playlist, it's no longer in that folder. Oh. So that's one of the disadvantages of playlist. The folders, whether it be a smart folder, filtered folder, or favorites folder, if you move it, recurse, it will know, it will look for where it's at and do it automatically. Put put you put put it back in that list without being an error. You're not at loss for this, but one of the things you have to do is relocate missing file. So it'll bring up. Uh, see my little thing there. Yeah. And it, this is where it thinks it should be. So I can just type in gin and juice. Um, all right. So one of those three is my gin and juice, which is that one. So I double click on that, and now it's back to the folder where it should be. Oh my goodness. So that's back active but like i said the, the advantage of using the folders is that you don't ever have this issue so, so if, if you, you switch would, computer what, what happens if you move the tub thumping up into a play deck what does it do does it give you an error 
it gives an error. Yeah, it'll just error right there. Yeah, and that's that's what, now. It, how would you so if I go back if I go back and relocate and do the quick search there for um there and then as soon as I relocated it, you see how it found it. Yep. It automatically when it it goes that quick. So that's the advantages and disadvantages of playlists. Wow. Um, I want to I want to talk a second on automation. Do you have a question? You look like you had a question. Um, I was just thinking, my goodness gracious, that's a that's a lot. If you move a folder, say if we, yeah, yeah, that's that's major look, time. Let's to go back to my playlist. Uh, some of these that I know I haven't touched in forever, like the band. That one's not so long. Um, Cinco de Mayo. There's a lot in Cinco de Mayo that I'm going to have to no redo. Way to, you, you would have to do them one by one. There's no mass okay. way. Of, yeah, correct. <sighs> because dummy me moved it somehow, and I don't, don't remember why I moved it. I really don't know why. I may just It may have been in a folder originally called Cinco de Mayo, and then I moved the Cinco de Mayo folder into the as a subfolder of Latin. Yeah, and, and that it, would be enough to do it, I bet. Yeah. Mm. So. That, again, is part of it. But using the other folder system, you don't have to worry about that. It finds it. Okay. Um, I want to go here into what – these are all filters right here. They're already built into virtual. I did not put any of these in. Okay. So if I want to go in, depending on how I have them tagged and, and years, it already has years in there. So songs that I have within that year base. This is already virtual. I didn't do any of this. All right. I can go into um, – most played and look at the songs I played in most recently added. I can look at songs that I've added recently, which actually, is, cause I have that one fill. I have that one, uh, uh, highlighted right now is why it's doing that. So if I go back to here, uh, recurse and last played, it's going to look at the song. And I was playing these two songs right here in John's ear before the show. Yep. So it's going to show what you played most played recently added stuff. That's recently added. There's back to my BPM thing again. Um, there's also most played there and recently added. Um, why is that only showing that as recently added? That's weird. Uh, there must be a different filter name on that. But it gives again, then we go to genres. So now we've got all these genres that virtual says that are there. Mm -hmm. 70s discos. What, and this goes kind of off tags. So I must have tagged Funky Town as a 70s pop disco. Okay. And that's why it put it in a 70s pop disco all by itself. And these are already there. So if you want to use these, you don't have to do anything. Sure. They're there. Now, are the, are the songs from our music services, do they, are they tagged pretty well? or Most of them are, but I change them because I'm picky about what it's tagged as. Because, And this is where it's going to take us into our last spot. Because I want to be able to find the stuff when I want to find it the way I want to find it. Sure. Okay. So I have certain things that I tag them for a reason. And I will go back and share, and we'll see how I tag them. And then you guys can then ask questions and test my tagging. Sure. Okay? See how well I did, which when there you, are going to be errors because I've been finding stuff recently. When you there show, are errors. When you show the tagging, are you gonna, can you mass tag? So say if you're bringing in. Yes. Good example. Okay. Let's, good. let's do that show with us. that other. Okay. I'm yep. going to share here. And let's go into the folders and um, Latin House should already be done. Uh, Island Sounds. That's like reggae, Irish. Um, okay, this is this was a, a compilation thing I got with 38 Irish drinking songs. Yep. So there is no genre on them. Well, there's a couple in there. Okay, so I can now highlight every one of them. Right click. Tag editor, mm -hmm. and type in there. Um, drinking songs. Irish, not, not Franking songs. Right yeah, and hit right tag. Franking songs isn't a, a good tag. No, we'll change that. So there's an error. And you see it it, it populated. No, so I just that. go back and it change them as a group. And then hit right tag, and it will tag all of them. So now they're all tagged with that genre. So now, can does that genre show up on a on that left side there somewhere? It would show up on 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 those folders. If I did that, then it would show up in that genre thing. I'm gonna guess. I don't know because, like I said, I don't use these, and I'll show you why. I don't use any of this stuff when I DJ. And this is where the people, when they ask me things, Holy why why I don't um whoops why I don't use any of the folders at all um. Get into I. There we go. 
Yep, it added one for it. There you go. Mm -hmm. But I don't use any of this because I tag to death and back okay. for a reason. So I'm going to jump into the new and pop, and we're going to look at something that I've added recently. Um, let me find an odd one here. Uh, urban crap. All right, so this could be tagged as that, that's one of my tags urban crap um <laughs> i also have a country crap um i want to find one let's do because you can sort remember we're sorting so we're going to sort by bpm um this may be a good one here um urban crap tens so tens means it came out in the 2010s okay that's one of my tags so i can do a, a genre search if i don't know the year i'll, I'll do that sometimes in there mm -hmm. um I need to find one that has a crossover tag. Urban pop is one of my favorites, meaning that it's a very urban song that somebody would label it as hip hop. I, I do urban because that's I, for years of doing stuff with promo only. Mm -hmm. I write urban. And then the word pop after it comes because that means it's crossed over to the mainstream chart. Sure. And if it was urban song that didn't cross over, that was just popular on the hip hop chart, it wouldn't get the word pop. So I can do searches for both that way. Okay. You understanding my tagging a little yep. bit so far mm -hmm. there? Um, let me find another one here. Um, this might be one I don't know. Um, Urban Pop 10s. So it's crossover and 10s. So I go into, when I tag these, as soon as I load the song, I tag them, and then I go back and fix the tags later. So again, the folder system you saw, for those of you who have terrible folder systems, you don't have to do that. You don't have to touch that if you don't want to. You can just start tagging songs. If you, like I said, with virtual, it makes it easy with virtual the way I do this. And then, because like I'm telling you, if anybody you know who is a, a committed DJ, you will they will spend lots of time making stuff sure it's right. Yeah. Tagging venues, uh, BPMs, key that the song is in, um, genres, little notes, uh, years, decades, whatever you want to do. So, now I'm doing all this tagging. We're going to go down to my main, my main one here, okay? And then we're going to do a search because I'm going to do, I, I spin by BPM, okay? So we're going to do 100-105. And it's now brought up every song that I have in mind, and it says 106, so we're going to go 105. Every song that's in there that's 100 to 105, okay? Let's say I want to take that further, and I only want that BPM in the time range of 2015 to 2000 oops i need the dash to, yeah 2017 so now by doing that search i've now labeled it to songs between 100 and 105 bpm that came out in either 2015 2016 or 2017 i can take that further go again and go pop Oop. so now it's only pop songs that are in there that are in that range of that mm -hmm. so let's say i know i want a pop remix so i'm going to go remix whoops so now this only shows the pop remixes between 100 and 105 that came out 15 16 or 17 that's why i tag them mm -hmm. because you don't have to worry about much if you want to tag stuff tag them and you know what it is and then if you go why well, i, I want to see what's you know maybe stuff you're in a hurry do the sort by play count, and I can look. I've played this song a hundred times, yep. and these ones I've never played. So I can go these. If I'm in a hurry, I can search that these are songs that are like, oh yeah, I definitely going to use this, or I use this a lot, or yeah, that's the one I was looking for. So like, let's say you even go, um, you want a uh, urban pop remix, 2015. There was one in their 15 and 16. Those are urban pop remixes in 16. And you can go that quick with that. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to do uh, 80s, like I said, I have mine shortened down sometimes that my short 80s are done just 800. Or if you have the years properly, you can go 1980 to 1989. And it gives you everything that falls within those year ranges. And then there you're going, oh, I'm spinning at 100 BPM to 105. And then it gives me all the songs that are 100 BPM to 105 that were put out in the 80s. And if you want to go even further than that, I can go um, promo only, quick edits that are 100 to 105. And it brings me up those. 
that quick. And that's why people don't like when I do, when I talk to them about tagging, because it's a lot of effort, but you saw how fast I'm finding stuff by tagging it. Didn't oh, yeah. move it, didn't worry about what folder it goes into. Nothing. I just do that quick because now my folder system <clears throat> goes this way. Um, one last share, and then we can go to questions and testing. Um, if you go over here, 2017, <clears throat> I put them in by month. So whatever I downloaded in 2017, December, November, yeah. October, etc. So that's my new filing system, that year and month. That's it. Nothing else. And I do that because if I'm going, hey, uh, that song I played last July, uh, what was it? And I can look all the songs that I downloaded in July and go, yep, that's that new remix of that song song, you know, and boom, there you go. But if I don't, I can search back again, 2017, you know, or I can even add again, because remember, you can add in these search things here, comments, I can put in there um, first seen. So it's going to give me a list of when they were seen, the date that I loaded them in the computer. Hmm. So if I just want to do that and do a search for the date it was loaded in the computer, I can do that. So I've got to, I've got to ask, you're adding about 15 songs a month? I, I actually was looking recently because I'm switching uh, uh, download services and I'm looking at different ones. And I range anywhere from, I think my lowest was six to my highest was 55. Wow. So I, I, I think my average is probably between 20 and 30 a month. But then and again, you're, you're, my, my way of searching is, is that I don't download it till it hits Billboard or Spotify's chart. So I don't care. Or if I absolutely need it for a gig, which, sure. you know, certain private gigs, they want certain songs. So as my searching, I don't go in and I've heard people do, well, I downloaded a terabyte or a, 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 a you know, 20 gigabyte or 50 gigabyte of songs. I'm not going to do that. I'm yeah. going to wait till it's something that I need. Get it then and add it. So I don't have crap that I don't want. But then again, you're also out. A, you you're also out a couple of times, so a week at time, most time. So you might get a request yeah. on Friday, or you find out about it, and you'll have it the, the next night. And I make notes all the time about songs. Uh, there's songs that I'll make a note when I'm out. Uh, make a short edit because I look at the song and go, that's way too long. So I'll make a short edit or look for a short edit and I'll go try to find it. The other night I had a song that I'm like, I don't have the video version of the song. Make a note, go get the video version. So that can be added to that. That will be thrown in the week, in the month. Okay. So let's say I'm looking for a 90 song video that gets thrown in the month just as I'm sorting. And then from there, I dump it out of there into the 90s folder and then do the search. And it has all the 90s tags and everything in it because I tagged it before there. Gotcha. So it gets put into things that I want, but it kind of, um, the, it, it's a step one, step two, step three thing for me. MJ, we're it, running, it, it, running out of time. All um, and I don't know if we can answer this question quickly. Um, how should a person uh, get rid of, deal with duplicate? Uh, is there a way to deal with duplicate files beyond just listening? You can, you can do a search within the, the software for, for a song. Um, you can do like a, a, a full one quick share here. Sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. So I can do, this is the long way and there are shorter ways. So I look at my, my DJ music, uh, recurse, sort by file names, and I can see what I have there. See, right there is a perfect example. I have three versions of that in there. All I would do is pick two of them. Actually, what I would do is drag them up to make sure that they're all, because one might be a goofed up or something. Yeah, you want to listen. So they're all playable. So I'm going to delete this one and I just go here. Um, it's called file but operation. Now, but now you, I see the genre. You had two different types of genre. You had house and EDM on that. Uh. Yeah, which that's, again, where we talk about flaws in my thing. Um, that actually, in my opinion, should have been marked EDM house hmm. and maybe dance and pop because it was a crossover. Levels was a crossover yeah. song to the pop charts. So that's how that should have been. That's, again, my errors. That's how that should have been. Yeah. Okay. MJ, we got to wrap it up. We... We are. Sorry, man. I, I tried to fit all well, that in and want to leave good. time for questions. They, they, so they send me questions if you have them. Send them directly to me. Yeah, I'll try to answer. Yeah. Otherwise, if, if you have, if you guys are thinking about, put them in the comments if you're watching this after the fact, because a lot of you will be watching it later. Because I've had already, you think six or seven people ask about, will this be available after? Yes, it will stay right here yes. on YouTube. Yeah. MJ, great. And, and, and if you want to do the edits, there are programs out there like the ones I mentioned earlier that you can't do a mass 
check for doubles. There's, I can't remember the name of it, but it literally will look for every double in your entire thing and tell you what their doubles on and let you do it that way. Yeah, it does auto search. We should, we should uh, do some of those secondary apps. Uh, look at those one of the nights here got coming up because I think there's a lot of value with those cool. too. Everyone, we'll be back in about five minutes with, with uh, Jeremy and Dave and uh, with their wedding chat. So, gosh, we're running out of time. Thanks, MJ. Tonight's DJ and TV show is sponsored in part by Electro Voice, DJ Event Planner, ADJ, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, Newmark, and DJ and TV Insider.